Crockford Valley Mills is a World Heritage Site and is located on the main A6 two miles south of Matlock, Derbyshire. Well here we are at Cromford. This is where Richard Arkwright built his first mill and we're on a guided tour and our guide for today is Don Hall. I'm with the Amber Valley Movie Makers and we're here today with Don Hall our guide. We set off from our rendezvous in the direction of Cromford Mill, now a multi-use visitor centre, office space and learning venue. We're here today to learn a bit more about Cromford and why are these mills here? And who was Sir Richard Arkwright? This little walk is based loosely on the life of Richard Arkwright. And I'll tell you more about Richard Arkwright when I get round the back of this rock, because it's a little bit quieter and a bit easier to talk. Around this area as a traveller, he used to sell wigs. He was a, a barber in the first place and a wig maker. And he used to go around the area buying hair from people. Uh, he, he, he dealt with the gentry. He dealt with the gentry selling wigs, and that stood him well later, later in life because he knew how to handle the gentry. But he also knew that round here there was plenty of labour going cheap. He also found that it was very quiet and isolated and he was a bit isolated from any problems and rebels because a lot of people that time of life in that, in that era were trying to wreck factories because they saw factories as damaging their way of life. But the most important reason he picked it was because of water and he knew or he'd heard that the water in this area, part of it was supplied by uh, Bonsall Brook, which is that one there, but also from a sub that drained all the lead mines in uh, Worksworth. And the sub, or Cromford Sub, came down. It wasn't such a great water supply, but the big advantage was it hardly ever froze up in winter because it came from deep underground. By late 1771, Arkwright had built a five-storey mill and employed about 200 workers, mainly women and children, as they were cheap labour. Conditions were very harsh and they had to work 13, 14 hours a day with only one week's holiday a year and then they were not allowed to leave the village. And the, about the same time as he built this, the Gell family who lived in Hopton Hall near Brassington they were rich landowners and owned all the lead mines and they wanted a means of getting lead down from uh, Brassington, that area, into Cromford where they got lead smelting works and rather than get it down on mules they built the Vigelia and uh, so they could get lead down to Cromford rapidly. So that was another access because labourers could get down into this area. Arkwright knew the power of water and harnessed it to power his water mills. But after the decline of the cotton industry, many of these mills were in a bad state of repair. You'd think we would learn from Arkwright and convert these water mills into hydro power stations. You see that green thing in the corner there? The water came actually over the road in that sort of tube. It's been it was there, I remember it there recently, but it was smashed by a lorry. It came from the other side of the road there and there was, where that hole is was a big water wheel and the, the water jetted over and started going round. And that powered, I think there were about 200 people there. And the people that worked there were mainly women and children. He didn't have a very good start in life. He had no formal education. I don't think we could afford to get him to school, but I think a cousin or some relative taught him. He started off uh, there fairly poor. Eventually uh, he was apprenticed as a peruke maker, which was a wig maker. He took over as a, he became a barber surgeon after that. He got married and he had one son. The son's name was also Richard Arkwright. Within months of him being born the wife died. So he was left with one 
child and obviously a job. Then I think he, he went in, he ran a pub with some guys in Bolton. He was born in Preston, a Lancashire lad, you see. His job as, as a wig maker began to find out about machinery. And I think he, he had a business for dyeing wigs one time, which is why he searched the old over England buying hair from the wealthy. Anyway, he went into machinery and he found, stumbled across two men who'd invented a way of spinning cotton. Cotton was hand spun then and the fibres were weak, but a machine could spin it more finely with a stronger thread and it did a better job. These two men who'd invented this machine and actually he looked at it and thought I can make it better. So he improved on it and he ignored them and carried on in his own pattern. And eventually he patented that design. In 1776, Arkwright built his second mill in Cromford and built further mills in Bakewell, Wordsworth, Crestbrook and Masson. He was clearly a man on a mission. Some say a workaholic. Towards the end of his life, he became knighted, he became Sir Richard Arkwright. So he had this built, and just before he was going to move in, it caught fire. So it was set back a bit. And he was just finishing it again, and he died. He died when he was 59. So you can see, the reason I've stopped here, he started off as a nobody, pretty poor, and died a very rich man who could afford this sort of place. When he died, he left 500,000, which in days, today's money is about 200 million. The group then made its way towards Cromford Village, which is now a very busy tourist area with many pubs, cafes and restaurants. Arkwright also built these houses for his workers in North Street. And on the top floor, weavers would work, weaving the cloth. Following the introduction of the Factories Act, Richard Arkwright Jr. had this school built, primarily for the education of children, to train them in obedience for the requirements of future employers. Well, that concludes our uh, tour of Cromford today, and uh, I certainly learnt a lot about Richard Arkwright, which I never knew before. And all thanks to our tour guide today, Don Hall. Don Hall, thank you. My name's Andy Wills. Goodbye. <laughs>